the benefits of statins outweigh the risks? Well, if you're 40 million people, then maybe they do. But if you're one person, we have to handle the risk-benefit trade-off differently. That's my topic for this week. Stay tuned. Today I'm going to concentrate on one of the adverse effects that's commonly talked about with statins, and that is the onset of type 2 diabetes. So it seems to be pretty official. This seems to be the position of most of the medical community. And I'm going to quote a bunch of papers. The links to the papers will be in the description. It is important to emphasize that there is still a favorable risk-benefit ratio for statin therapy due to a large reduction in cardiovascular risk despite the adverse effects of type 2 diabetes development. Overall, the risk of incident diabetes with statin therapy is present but largely outweighed by the actual benefits. Evidence from randomized clinical trials suggests that the benefits from preventing cardiovascular disease and mortality with statins overweigh the risk of new onset diabetes. And benefits of statin therapy exceeded the diabetes hazard even in participants at high risk of developing diabetes. It is generally accepted that the benefits of statins for preventing cardiovascular disease far outweigh the risk of new onset diabetes. Nevertheless, administration of statins with a lower risk of new onset diabetes is ideal for those at high risk of diabetes. Okay, that's a little bit of good responsible medicine in there. At least they're going to be careful in this circumstance. First of all, as correctly stated by Abbasi et al. and others, the overall risk-benefit ratio remains strongly in favor of statin therapy as first-line prevention, even in patients who later develop new onset type 2 diabetes because of the treatment. Therefore, the net clinical benefit of statins remains substantial even if those benefits are nominally blunted by statin-related incident type 2 diabetes. Clinical guidelines advocate that cardiovascular benefits of statin treatment overweigh the risk of impairment of glucose metabolism. And finally, the recommendation by the investigators are that though statins can have diabetogenic risk, they have more long-term benefits which can outweigh the risks. Now, each of these quotes is actually from a different paper. This isn't just one paper advocating this. So, seems to be official, but is it? Well, here's another viewpoint. A recent study found that direct-to-customer advertising leads to overdiagnosis of high cholesterol and overprescription of statins to those group of patients where the risks of such therapy may outweigh potential benefits. So they're blaming the direct-to-customer advertising we get from papers and television commercials, especially recently for diabetes medication, statins, everything else. Yet, there's another viewpoint, and that is, we believe that these misperceptions about the relative risk and benefits of statin therapy, in other words, the misperception that the risks outweigh the benefits instead of vice versa, uh, are propagated by direct-to-consumer advertising, which may emphasize potential adverse events relative to treatment benefits. These perceptions are likely to adversely affect statin adherence and may be addressed by patient education. So here's another case of what I've talked about before, and that is the medical community is saying, Patients aren't adhering because we haven't educated them enough. Not because there's anything wrong with statins. It's that medical hubris. And they're actually blaming the direct-to-consumer advertising. The other opinion was that was causing too many people to be on statins. And if the advertising were actually taking people off of statins, the marketing people aren't dumb. They would change the advertising. So I think this is a ridiculous position. So as an engineer, I'm accustomed to evaluating risks with what's called a risk cube. It looks like two dimensions, but the third dimension is actually the color of the squares. And the way it works is this. The top row is most likely to happen. The bottom row will be things that are less likely to happen. And the consequences go from left to right. The left column is those things where the consequences are not very heavy, you know, ow, oh, it hurts, it's an annoyance, to the uh, right column being things that are really have dire consequences like possible death. The colors of the squares indicate how we're going to handle these risks when we evaluate them. And in the case of statin adverse effects, if we're in a green box, we're going to just kind of let them occur and deal with them as they come up, passive detection of them. And we may treat them with over-the-counter medications, that sort of thing. If we're in a yellow square, then we're going to actively monitor for them through blood tests or something like that, and we're going to reassess and treat if possible. And if we end up in a red square, well, we should 
in the therapy right away and cross our fingers and hope not to die. Now, I've put in 10 of the more common, more frequent adverse effects here. And in fairness, with statins, they're actually all either uncommon or rare, except for maybe minor muscle pain. Now, just because I say they're uncommon or rare doesn't mean you who is watching this haven't experienced it. With 40 million people on it, there will be millions of people still experiencing each of these adverse effects. So if you're experiencing them, yeah, they're real and I'm not telling you that they're not. Where you put, which column you put it in from left to right, some of that is subjective. I mean, death is, is a pretty hard endpoint, but shortness of breath is a good example. For me, I would actually move it over to the right a little because shortness of breath during exercise, since I exercise a lot, I hike a lot, that would be having a negative impact on my quality of life. So let's consider this. Now, you notice everything's either in a yellow or a green box as we begin, and let's look at just rhabdomyolysis for a second. We know that's a dangerous condition, can lead to death. Well, if a patient is sitting in front of the doctor and the doctor says, well, that's very rare, you know, you could really benefit from this medication, so don't worry about rhabdomyolysis. Well, the patient then, suppose it's one of those rare people who develops rhabdomyolysis. Well, now, it's no longer a rare occurrence, it's a certain occurrence for that person which puts us into the red zone. And what do we do? Well, a good doctor will immediately end the therapy and initiate recovery procedures to help the person recover from this and will never touch a statin again. For some reason, they treat new onset type two diabetes a little differently because if it occurs by rights, we should say, wait a minute, we just increased one of our risk factors. Statins are supposed to reduce risk factors. And to me, getting type two diabetes because of a medication is just unacceptable. It seems from all those quotes that I gave earlier, that's not the medical profession's position on this. So let's dig a little deeper. I believe that the medical profession actually engages in what I call assembly line medicine. And here's a quote from another paper. Some evidence suggests that statins as a class raise blood glucose, that will give you diabetes, and in some patients at high risk of future diabetes may produce a level of hyperglycemia where formal diabetes care is appropriate. This risk, however, is outweighed by the reduction in vascular risk with statins. Okay, from the point of view of sitting in front of a patient who doesn't have type two diabetes and saying, should we try this statin or not? I know we all probably think that the answer should be no, just kind of universally should be no, but let's kind of put ourselves in a doctor's position and just say, okay, he really wants to help this patient and they're not willing to make lifestyle changes. So the risk is outweighed by the reduction in the vascular risk with the statins. Okay, but that's not the end of the statement. There's actually another phrase on this statement and that says, and therefore should not be a reason for stopping statin treatment. So actually this paragraph is not talking about that situation where we're trying to decide whether to put the person on statins. It's actually talking about the situation where they actually have developed type two diabetes and are trying to decide whether to take them off. And the position here is no, they shouldn't be taken off. So here's some medicine for thought. It can be argued that the benefits outweigh the risks as long as the risk does not become a realized risk. You know, that's a terminology that we use in the defense industry. Once an unacceptable adverse effect actually occurs, the benefit no longer outweighs the risk. And that seems to be the problem. The medical community doesn't reevaluate when these things occur. And that is the problem with the way we, they treat the risks, benefits, trade-offs. So that's my take on the way the medical profession does the trade-off between benefits and risk. They do an analysis on a population, 40 million people, however many it is, and they stick with that risk-benefit trade-off as if there is no new information. When a patient comes in and it turns out that these risks have become realized, you have to reevaluate. They obviously do for rhabdomyolysis. If somebody has that or necrotizing myositis, yeah, they take them off the statins. But they don't seem to want to do that when it comes to new onset type two diabetes, which is a major risk factor for cardiovascular events. When that occurs, when somebody has developed type two diabetes, it's time to take them off the statins and go into some other therapy re-emphasize with them how much lifestyle improvements can help and go from there. 
If you appreciate this content, please like, share, and subscribe and comment on this topic and others you'd like me to cover. And if you haven't seen this video, I recommend you take a look at it now. Thanks for listening.